Henry Ford was uh, known to have said, why is it that every time I ask for a pair of hands, they come with a mind attached? <laughs> what we were doing 100 years later in this iconic American firm was to invert that ideology. We asked, how do we embrace the mind and the heart and the soul that comes with the hands? From our research, and from what others were doing, I saw that the principles for guiding the growth of leaders were the same as what was needed to integrate work and the rest of life. What are those principles? To be real, to act with authenticity by clarifying what's most important to you, your values, your vision of the future you're trying to create. To be whole, to act with integrity, coherent, one, whole by respecting the whole person and building trust and connections with the people who matter most in your life. And finally, to be innovative, to be acting with creativity by continually experimenting with how things get done and bringing others along with you. And throughout this whole process, to be always reflecting, actively reflecting, uh, in order to improve your own knowledge about how to create positive change in the world, change that's sustainable because it works not just for you, but for your family, your community, and your business life as well. The big idea was that leadership in business isn't really about business, it's about life. So at Ford, where I stayed for two and a half years before returning to Wharton, we built a systematic process to help people overcome the fear and the guilt that inhibit them from creating positive change in their world. We compelled them to try to make things better for themselves as individuals and for their families and for their communities and for our business. So there's no or in that statement, it's all and. The goal was what I eventually referred to as four-way wins in a book that I later wrote uh, and called uh, Total Leadership. My subversive mission was to give men a language and the tools that they needed to address their work-life challenges because men have them. They're just different. So the key words were leadership, performance, driving change to produce results. This was not for women only. And it worked. So organizations since, since then, like the US Army, Target, the United Health Group, Silicon Valley firms, manufacturing companies, banks, hospitals, a number of others, have found this to be a fruitful approach because it gives people tools and social support coupled with accountability pressure because peer-to-peer uh, -peer coaching in this process is essential. In fact, it's the secret sauce of the recipe. There's other people who are doing the same thing you're doing and they're coaching you and asking you challenging questions about what you're trying to get done and you're doing the same for them um, <clears throat> to find solutions that are customized entirely by and for each individual. What we ask people to do then is act like scientists and to design short-term experiments that are intended to pursue and produce four-way wins and then they measure and reflect on their progress. There are nine different kinds of experiments, and they include things, simple things, like shifting where and when you do your work, uh, focusing your attention by turning off your digital stream, or starting a new venture, or even, even a new relationship. Uh, most of what we see are hybrids, of, um, but there's really an infinite variety. What's essential is that for each experiment, there are consciously intended benefits at work, at home, in the community, and for the private self, and some way to measure progress towards those, towards those goals in each of the four domains. So those goals can either be a direct result or, by way of spillover, an indirect result of something that you try one single action, producing benefits in all four parts. So like if you tried to do some sort of new exercise program to restore and rejuvenate yourself, you're doing that not just for yourself, so that you might perhaps look better in a bathing suit this summer, but you're doing it for your business life, to improve your productivity. You're doing it for your family, to be healthier for them. You're doing it for your community, to be a more active citizen, perhaps. So you're doing it for them. And that's what makes it about leadership. And the usual result that we see is that people end up spending a little, little less attention on work 
and they improve their performance at work. And this seems paradoxical, and my economist friends always kind of scratch their heads when, we, when they hear me say this, but it's true that's what we see in our research, improved performance at work and in the other domains because of greater focus with less distraction and more engagement uh, about you know, working with the people and the projects that matter most. The critical outcome, though, is a greater sense of confidence and competence in being able to produce sustainable change. There's a shift in how people think about what's possible. So finding creative solutions for integrating work and the rest of life to improve performance in all the different parts, that is the leadership challenge. And we've also continued the survey research, and so 20 years after we started it, we studied the class of 2012 to compare them to the class of 1992, and one of the startling observations we just observed is the baby bust. Uh, we asked the question, do you plan to have kids? Yes, probably, not sure, probably not, and no. In 1992, 79% said yes. In 2012, guesses? 42%. This was really striking to me. So we dug into the data, and what we're discovering is that the reasons for men and for women uh, are very, very different as to why they are inhibiting their interests in having children. The good news, and I'll wrap up on this, is that men and women are now a lot more alike in how they think about what makes relationships and families work. Um, there used to be a wide divergence between men and women about how to make dual earner relationships work, but now they agree. So there's the good news. There's the good news. The convergence of men and women promises all kinds of new forms of, of collaboration, uh, producing new models, uh, using the ideas that many of us here are, are creating and disseminating. Uh, and that are um, abounding in the incredibly rich conversation that is happening in America uh, today. And this gives me hope for the prospects of greater freedom, uh, for people to choose how they want to live and how they want to work, and so uh, to leave um, a better world for the generations to come. Thanks.